the details of policy. And he just said, look, we're just going to get rid of the lines, these arbitrary lines called states, now, now, that divide each of these, uh, basically an entire nationwide industry into these little chunks, which in effect creates protective monopolies. It's actually a government protective monopoly right. in each state. And Trump is pointing this out. It ends up causing these uh, companies in small areas such as like New York City, which is what he knows, to jack up prices and not be able to compete with another exact same company in New Jersey, which is literally you could walk to New Jersey from New York City. Right. When he uses a term, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you folks, I, I have not heard it referred to like this, but uh, but I'm just assuming in the inner, inner circle, in the upper echelons, when they talk about... They probably originally talked about, okay, we're going to create all these lines across America, right at the borders. We're going to keep all these insurance. There will be two insurance companies per state line. We'll keep them in the state lines, whatever that may be. I haven't heard it referred to as lines, but Trump knows what he's talking about. Rubio thinks he knows what Trump's talking about. There, yeah, I'll tell you what. There's that's a lot the of point. Well, no, the then that's true. But the bigger point is, is that. What does the audience think? The audience uh, is not necessarily – some of them might, but not necessarily know who's the one that knows what they're talking about and who's the one that doesn't know what they're talking about. And, and Trump has been for many, many decades a successful businessman uh, up to his eyeballs in real private business in America. Capitalism. Having to deal – not just capitalism, but also having to deal with the corruption of government and all that – and he has to deal with that, and that's why that answers a lot of questions. When you, when every single answer that comes out of uh, Trump's mouth, or everything that comes out of his mouth, when the listener always keeps in mind that we're talking about somebody who's had to deal every single day with fighting in a free market to be as successful as possible, him personally and each of his different businesses. Things start to make sense. All the things that the Rubio camp and the Cruz camp keep calling lies, and I'll do the finger quotes, um, actually are completely accurate when you put it into context that we're listening to somebody who is talking about what he had to deal with as a businessman. Right. If you take it into context of him being a politician, and I'll give you a perfect example right here. It's a little bit off the topic of what we're talking about with capitalism. But the, one of the big things is, is well, we know that Trump is just a wolf in sheep's clothing because we know he's a Democrat because he gave so much money to so many Democrats. Here's a list of them. Here's a list of all the Democrats and that he gave he, money to. And if he is the GOP nominee, all the Democrats are going to come after him with that list. Well, they, they probably won't, but, but, the, but the... That's what I'm being told. Well, the Republicans are going to say don't vote for him, and, and then there, there's a bunch of people who are going to stay home. But here's the thing. If Trump was a politician, this would be devastating. Right. This is horrible. If, if, if the <laughs> list came out of Cruz right. giving money to Democrats, you'd be like, what? What the heck is going on here? It doesn't make any sense. Why would Cruz, a senator from Texas who's been a lifelong politician, what the heck is he getting? That would literally be equivalent to Donald Trump dumping a uh, contributions or donations onto his direct competitors in business right and and rubio and and cruz and hillary and all the politicians they can't believe it blows their minds their eyes are shooting out blood oh they like, think it's they think it's the smoking gun they're like we got him we, we got, got him, him. And we're throwing it out there and the people you me us we're like uh some of them are falling for it though I, because they're used to the politics right this right. would be devastating if it came out about cruz correct however you and I would look at it. We're like, well, you've been in business. I've been in business. I know how god awful the red tape is on a low entry level small mom and pop shop. Right? Can you imagine trying to build skyscrapers like he does in a totally democratic, democratic state? Or democrat state. Oops, sorry, I slipped up there. D New York. New York. So uh, New York is... Uh, How long did it take them to, to clean up 9-11 and rebuild that tower? They said they couldn't get it done. They right. said the paperwork and the, the, red the, tape. the red tape involved took them 
10 and, years. And all the all the palms they had to grease probably to make things happen. I mean, a decade when when back in the day the the uh the, uh, the Eiffel remember the Eiffel that tower, the, uh, uh the with the Eiffel Tower? What time? Empire State Building. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was built in no time. Oh, that, that was back in the 30s, right? It went up. That was before the baby boomers. <laughs> <It's been a long laughs> wow. The baby boomers could screw it up. Right, right. So if you keep into consideration everything coming out of his mouth, he's not a politician. And I'm not saying he's not a politician, so he should be a, given a pass on cuss words or simpleton speak or whatever. What I'm saying is is when, when, when a smoking gun article or, or – ad comes out about him giving max contributions to democrats you've got to remember we're talking about somebody that's trying to survive in a world where politicians are constantly threatening your business and th don't forget democrats were in power hillary clinton and bill clinton were in power for eight long long years uh a house was owned by the by the democrats house owned by the Repub well republicans have both the house and the senate lost it then obama had the house and the senate and the presidency <clears throat> then the tea party members took that back here's my point when the house and the senate and the presidency are owned wholly by democrats what do you do as a businessman let's go find a republican uh no <laughs> come on man what, what are we talking about here we talking about practice yeah once you i think that that's the key and it's going to be hard Hard. That's the the problem we have, and which is why we do this radio show, is that we've got to constantly be reminding people of the way they have to view this stuff. You cannot say, "Oh, wow, that's that's horrible to hear that Trump gave to so many." Dem it's not like, "Oh, he gave to somebody that has liberal leanings." No, no, these were Democrats, right? And as a business person, for him not to do what he did back then would have number one made him less successful and number two would have been negligence as a chief executive right these were things you have to do now what i believe is the reason trump is running is because this stuff disgusts him and if you're a free market capitalist it should disgust you right and so i'm hoping and he may not say this or he might think that well if i just come out and say it it might not sound right to people, but I think that if he were to be honest, he might say, and I am putting words in his mouth here, I think he would say, uh, I can't wait to get rid of all this crap that I had to do and make it so that future business people don't have to do all this crap. It, there's something wrong with America when a businessman who, who has conservative leanings has to dump millions and millions of dollars a, into cam campaigns of Democrats in order to be successful yeah the whole system is corrupt right he he has to if you it's, don't it's you like in order to success. in order to have job security as a um as a uh, blue collar worker you need to get in a union and they take money out of your union dues and it goes directly to democrat Democrats. campaigns and you might not want to have anything to do with it but it's the only thing you can do if you want to have if you want to guarantee job security because they're not going to mess with the unions well not only just have guaranteed job just have a job yeah you want to have a job and get in with a you oh a union shop all right get in with the union shop because you know what i mean they even if i do get laid off they got plans on the back end they'll move me around whatever you, dump dump uh, government uh, program money on right right those so, people so I've been told and I've been in situations and I've seen situations growing up when I was younger and and I'm not saying it's me but I had witnessed a parent instruct their child hey I pay into the welfare system why don't you go down there and get some of that okay. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I've been paying into it. Go ahead, get it. All right. That's frustrating. Because it's actually teaching and encouraging uh, a cycle that ends that's up from a one. That's from a baby boomer to a non-baby boomer. And it's just, it, it's infuriating that, that that is even a conceptual answer. Like, why would you even conceive that as being an answer? Right. You, get, you have a problem, there's a program, a government program to solve it. Right. Oh, you want to start a business? Oh, you know what? The government's got a program with that. Because you, that's the only way you'll get through the red tape. Right. How is how is the government involved in all this 
business where we never needed them before. Why is it that our generation needs an FHA loan? We don't! <laughs> oh, oh, no. You know why we need it? Because of everything all screwed up. It's the only way you get a It's the only way you could get a foothold. Right. It's the only way to get your foot in a door and get up on something. Solid ground. Something. It, yeah, that's the only way. The baby boomers, boomers didn't need that. Does that make them better? No. They didn't have to deal with the crap we have to deal with. Right. So let me so, finish it. Let me finish this. Yeah, yeah. We need to get back. Other get, things about. Yeah, that. we'll get back to. Um, plans, but now he's can, repeating himself. No, I'm not repeating. No, no, no. no. Okay. What? This is a montage sad, clip. Sad. And and right after he said Trump. Oh, look, look, he's repeating himself. That crowd was stocked, chock full of GOP rhino establishment establishment people, people oh. because when he said, "Look, he's repeating himself." It was like somebody turned the light on and said clap, and they roared. There was somebody in the audience, and and this is so weird. Who could do this? How, what kind of self-respect? It was a woman, or if it wasn't a woman, uh, somebody needs to get checked. But uh, <laughs> Hey, they can be whoever uh, they want to be nowadays. But anytime Rubio did something, somebody had a, a joy gas. On right. It, it was, what? I can't. No way I could get that high, but it was nuts. As soon as he did that, you heard her. Yeah, and she, that wasn't the only time it happened. Oh. But anyway, go ahead. Let's I talk see him about your plan. Stuff every night. It says five things. Everyone's dumb. He's going to make America great Senator again. Rubio. We're going to win, win, win. Senator He's Rubio, winning in please. the polls. Please and the lines are okay, okay. Now you hear, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I know. You don't even need to watch the real debate. You just come here. We'll do the highlights and the clips. Okay. The CNN moderators in Houston had completely lost all control of this debate. Well, you it, could hear that. You're right. It was an screaming over the top of the uh, the the, <laughs> the moderator over over Rubio. All, uh, the candidates, all the candidates. It's at one point there was like four people all screaming for a 30 second period at each other at the same time without Either any of them listening to any of them, they were all like, "Somebody's going to stop talking, and when they do, they're going to hear me." Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Down the state. Well, we the can have many different plans because there's going to be competition. And again. <laughs> okay, so stop right there. Here's what he's talking about with many different plans. The politicians who clearly the rhinos who have no idea how capitalism work. When Trump says we're going to have many different plans. What he's talking about is the businesses. There's going to be many different businesses. They're all going to come up with their own plan, he's and the government's going to get the hell out of the way. Right. He can't tell you all the plans because none of them will be his. They won't be, and that's the point. And if Rubio is stuck in this hole, and so is oh, this he moderator. That everybody, not only is the moderator and Rubio, but also the pundits afterwards that played this clip all thought that they finally got him. We got him. We've got him. And here's the clip to prove it. Trump didn't have a plan. No, you know why he didn't have a plan? Because he's not a communist. And it's not going to be his plan ever. It's going to be the plan of ABC company, uh, 123 company. There's going to be dozens and dozens and do new businesses will pop up overnight, successfully providing and competing with each other without these arbitrary borders to allow them to create corrupt monopolies. That is his plan, and that is the plan of a of a genuine free market capitalist. You know, everybody talks about how great Cruz is because of his constitutionalism down to the letter, which I wholeheartedly uh, agree with that notion. And his record in the Senate. Yeah, is, absolutely. He gets a 97% a rating for conservative values. Right. And I don't know what Cruz, if this was a back and forth between Cruz and Trump, I would have loved to have heard exactly how Cruz would have worded it. Maybe Cruz would have worded it better because I would think that Cruz, being the constitutionalist that he is, might have a better grasp of what it means to live in a, a free market capitalist society. Rubio has completely exposed himself for being somebody that has absolutely no idea what free market capitalism is. He thinks that it's the job of the government to micromanage industry, and that is precisely what communism is. Now, I'm not accusing him of being a communist, but he's. if you don't know the stark contrast between 
uh, somebody that believes in free market capitalism and somebody that believes in social.